Welcome back, Tribe. I have one here from CNBC. It says, why a $100,000 salary can't buy the American dream? All right, give it to me straight, CNBC. More than half of Americans say they would need at least $100,000 a year to be financially comfortable. The benchmark of a six-figure salary used to be the gold standard income. It represented the tipping point of finally earning a disposable income and building a savings, spending based on your wants, not just your needs. The American dream is what makes a middle-class lifestyle. You're able to pay your bills. You're able to put food on the table, put a roof over your family's head. And you have some additional savings. Now, people making well over six figures are still living paycheck to paycheck. What used to symbolize financial freedom is now keeping people stressed about making ends meet. 26% say they would need more. A salary in the range of $100,000 to $149,000 per year would make them feel financially comfortable. I think, unfortunately, what has happened is that wages haven't kept up with the cost of living by and large for the last 50 years or so. And so it becomes increasingly hard for many families to be able. Don't let them lie to you and say inflation is only 3 percent, 8 percent here. It's come down 4 percent. It's absolutely bullshit. If you compare groceries from today and three, four years ago before the pandemic, people's grocery carts are looking like double the price. Inflation is well over the piddly percentages they report to us, just like they report unemployment in a special way now. Because if they use the real numbers from the 80s or the 70s where they actually counted anybody without a job, we'd be in the near 25 percent. And if that wasn't the case, why do you think they're making wages go up for fast food workers? California, I think, is now instituting $20 an hour for fast food workers. Imagine that. They were already the nation's highest, bumping that up to $15 an hour. Now they're bumping it to $20 an hour. You're watching in real time the value of the dollar completely crash before your eyes. Your purchasing power as an average American is disappearing. Well, to attain that sort of middle class lifestyle, that American dream. How much you need to feel financially secure varies so much depending on not only your geographical location, but of course your lifestyle. It used to be that a six-figure salary was like the gold standard. But nowadays, that may not be enough to make ends meet in certain parts of the country, especially like New York or San Francisco, where it costs so much more just to cover your daily expenses. Here's why a $100,000 household income no longer buys the American dream. Go Banking Rates analyzed how much a family of two adults and two children would need in each state to own a home, a car, and a pet, as well as have an additional 20% of their income for savings and 30% for discretionary spending. The core of what the American dream means is some amount of economic security that you feel like you can get by and do a bit better. Maybe do better than your parents, maybe be able to afford a house, certainly be able to save for your children's future. All 50 states. You can't say for your children's future, you're hardly surviving as a young person today. You can hardly afford rent alone. Most people are forced to live with their parents. Their jobs have disappeared after graduating college where they were promised that getting $100,000 in debt would be worth it. There's nothing. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. And you graduate with no jobs existing in an economy where even your entry level job is asking for like five years experience, bro, how? And the pay is so shit. How am I going to survive? I have to live with my parents while I work. And I'm a college graduate working full time being treated like garbage. This is insane. They wonder why people are becoming digital nomads. They wonder why people are opting out of coming into the office. They rather live in some remote area of the United States or go work remotely in a whole different part of the world where the power of the dollar goes much further. There's guys surviving overseas, not even surviving, thriving on just $2,000 USD a month. That shit gets eaten up by rent alone in America. And then the landlords have the gall to tell you that you need to make 3x this for us to be safe. You're going to make your monthly payments. You need $6,000 gross to even apply for some of these apartments. And we're not talking about nice places. This is just to be in a place that's decent enough. And now you want to get a whole wife and pay for that, a whole child pay for that. You want to raise an entire family under what economic conditions can you do this as a young man? This is why so many men are pulling out of the system completely and going their own way. These people are delusional. It's require more than a $100,000 annual income with 38 states needing more than $140,000. The most affordable states, Mississippi, Arkansas, and Kentucky, need between $109,000 and $117,000. You see? The median income for a household of four people in each of those states in 2022 was between $71,000 and $87,000. Hawaii, California, and Massachusetts are the most expensive. Each requires an annual income of more than $240,000. 
The median income for a family of four in those three states in 2022 fell at least $94,000 short of what's required for the American dream. Yep. A different analysis from EPI found that in about 80% of the country, a family of four can afford their basic needs on less than $100,000 per year. Those include things such as housing, food, transportation, health care, child care. Do you see how they're getting you to accept these ridiculous policies? These are the areas you can go live if you want to survive on less than $100,000 a year. Dude, $100,000 a year? 20 years ago, that was you making it solidly in the middle class, having excess. Your house, your car, fully paid off. You got kids going to college, fully paid off, and you take the family on a vacation once a year. That's what 100 grand used to get you. We're talking basic needs. It takes 100 Gs or less now to get your basic needs in this green part of the country. Who the fuck lives right here? Please, someone tell me. Who the hell lives here? Who lives here or here? Nobody. There are no jobs that pay enough. The people in this area with their local wages are so depressed, they're also in an economic clinch. It's just worse around the coast where most of the jobs, these are metro, these are major metropolitan areas. This is Atlanta. That's Miami. That's all the coast of San Diego, Los Angeles, San Francisco, you know, Seattle, all that shit. And look, Denver priced out most of the damn state in Colorado. Huh. Albuquerque right here. Birmingham, Alabama. These are all the capitals, dude. Every where the jobs are, where all the jobs are. You can't afford to work and live there. Who the hell's pulling in 100 G's? And that's for a family because these are blue areas. That means you're you have to do well above 100. The ones in California need a 260 thou boys. That's a quarter million dollars is not enough. That's barely hitting basic needs in the state to be well off like 100,000 used to get you. You probably need to be making half a million in California now to have the same life you should have had in the 90s with like 100 G's. How ridiculous has the pricing gotten? Inflation has destroyed the dollar. Team red, team blue. Both of us got us in this position, boys. You're going to vote either or at this election. Not shit is going to change for you. It's getting worse. The only thing you could possibly do that has a direct effect on your life today is getting a passport taxes, and a few other basic necessities. This shit is wild. Don't take into account anything extra. It's really just putting food on the table, putting a roof you see, up your head, getting health care for your family. And so you're not saving for a rainy day if something happens to somebody or if they lose their job. So there's wow. no extra in there for retirement, for kids' college. Those are the kinds of things that many people want to save for. You Those see? are many things that people consider a What was the percentage of Americans not having even $400 in their bank account? Hold on. Look at this stat. It is dystopian. 54% of Americans can cover three months of expenses with saving. 45% of Americans can afford a $400 expense with funds from their checking or savings account. That's nearly four in 10 Americans that can't cover a $400 expense. We are living paycheck to paycheck. And they're telling us the economy's drumming, humming on all fours, the stock market hitting new highs. None of that shit's real for the average American. Part of the American dream. Only about 3% of those counties have a median income higher than the basic cost of living. You see? The idea behind the American dream has... Hold on. Here's where everybody should be looking then. <laughs> Pause, screenshot this, go on Google Maps and find this out. These are the affordable counties. Everything else is unaffordable. Jeez, man. Again, look, South Georgia here where they're showing you on this map on the border with northern Florida, there's absolutely jack shit there. You're in the middle of swampland, nothing. This part here, I've driven through Texas, a small town, Amarillo. Ain't shit going on there. I'm surrounded by little meth villages all around you. People are depressed, dude, drug addicts. It's This shit is crazy. And you want to tell me the future is here? The idea behind the American dream hasn't really changed, even though lifestyles have. It used to be that you could get out of school, get a job, buy a home and start a family. And now those milestones are harder to achieve. It used to be that a high school degree, you're good to go. You could get a great job building cars or something and be right in the middle class off of a high school degree. But now... In order to get into the middle class, a high school degree is clearly not enough, right? Now, you got to pay for college. People are graduating with much larger student loan balances. And then it's harder to be on that same sort of career trajectory that would provide the stability that you maybe would have had a generation ago to save up for the down payment on a home. Student loan debt reached an all-time high of $1.77 trillion in the first quarter of 2023. This can have a ripple effect, especially when entire generations are starting their adulthoods with thousands of dollars in debt. 
So when you think about the kinds of investments you want to make for your children, the cost of college has gone up a lot faster than overall inflation. So trying to make those investments on a smaller and smaller paycheck compared to the cost of living can be very difficult and almost impossible. And so the kinds of debt that young people can rack up going to college gets larger and larger and your ability to then make ends meet yourself, be able to buy a car, be able to move out of your parents' house. Wow. Those things become much more difficult over time. The American dream it typically is people owning property and having children, but that's becoming largely inaccessible for many people. And even those who have attained these things are finding themselves managing every dollar coming in and out just to stay afloat. So that trade-off is underlying the new cost of the American dream. Millennials and Gen Zers still want to buy homes despite feeling like they can't afford it. 62% of younger millennials and 63% of Gen Zers still say owning a home is part of the American dream. 66% of U.S. renters surveyed say rising prices leave them feeling hopeless about ever owning a home. 72% of respondents say they can't afford the down payment. 17% of all homebuyers said that saving for the down payment was the most difficult task in the buying process. And 52% said student loan debt delayed their ability to save. The typical first-time homebuyer in 2022 had a household income of $95,900. Nationally, a prospective home buyer would need a nearly $110,000 salary to afford the principal, interest, taxes, and insurance payments on a median price home. But the median household income in the United States in 2022 was a little under $75,000. If you're born to a nice neighborhood in which your parents have lots of wealth and lots of income, your chances of doing well are vastly improved. And part of that's home ownership. Collectively, Americans owe $1.13 trillion on their credit cards. Inflation, it's eroding people's purchasing power. It's reducing their ability to save for their future or invest in these long-term goals. So that loss of financial stability can create a sense of powerlessness and insecurity and contribute to feelings of uncertainty and vulnerability. It can really impact people's self-esteem, their resilience. And here's some bad news for you guys about the latest economic reports from the United States. So ISM manufacturing PMI is down 46.8. Construction spending is down. Manufacturing employment is down. Manufacturing new orders is down. But you know what's up? Manufacturing prices. And the bank just cut interest rate. The economy is contracting. How we're not officially in a recession yet is blowing my mind. Everybody feels it. We feel like we're in a recession. By the end of the year, if there isn't already talk of a recession, I don't know. I don't know what these people are on. Look at the stock market, how it's performing. Smart people are already getting out now. Smart people are already cashing out right now before your very eyes. Just look at everything. All the economic report says America is headed to a recession. What is this going to do for the rest of the world? The inflation is catching up with the average consumer. They can't afford to spend anything anymore. They've been gouged out by corporate profits. This stuff, this is insane, bro. Nobody talks about any of this. It's the worst time ever to buy a house. It's the worst time ever to buy a car. Everything is completely overpriced. The interest rates are out of control. You can't afford anything you could just a few years ago. Just a few years ago, not decades when your grandma and grandpappy were shopping for houses. Just a few years ago, you've been priced out of your life. How insane is that? Overall psychological health. Economists have suggested that debt growth became a substitution for income growth. More than a quarter of Americans said that they are doom spending or spending money despite economic concerns. There's also what this the idea that young adults are feeling more discouraged in their own financial standing. So in that way, they're less inclined to even save for long-term goals and more likely to just live in the moment. It's just sort of that mentality, like you only live once, I may not buy a home anyway, so let's take that trip or let's go to that event, whether... And that's mostly women doing that's not men. Women are the sh- like lion shareholders of debt in America. It's a Taylor Swift concert or other you know, big ticket uh-huh. item. of Gen Zers say the current economy makes it difficult to set up long-term goals. And it's not just about revenge spending. It's just about wanting to enjoy life and make the most of what you have, even if you can't necessarily buy that home or, you know, you're not starting a family just yet and you really want to, you know, feel good about yourself in the moment. People are indulging to the extreme. And I think we we often buy because we 
let's call it what it is, mostly women are indulging to the extreme and men have turned into recluses, little hermits that hide in their rooms and play video games all day because everything else is too goddamn expensive to do. One game cost me a one-time payment. Some of them are free to play. I'll even be as cheap as not buy any skins or battle passes or any extra premium packs. None of that shit. I just play with the boys on my broke ass character that I have no skins for and that's cool. I get way more value in that than I would going out and paying 60 bucks for an overinflated shitty meal with a woman that doesn't like me and is using me for food anyways and leaving me wondering what the hell's the point. This is what a lot of young men are feeling. This is why you see a lot of young men just choosing not to go to college is the toxic masculinity and this the environment in general is toxic towards men and there's no futures unless you're in a STEM degree that's specialized. Only other option left for men that they're overwhelmingly trying to choose right now is trade schools or going overseas as a password bro or teaching English or something like that of that nature. Remote work, teaching yourself a skill in the digital economy. That's your only option, boys. The nine to five, 40 years for a company being a good old Ted with a little plaque for thank you for 40 years and here's a nice retirement setup. That Those days are gone. Your daddy had those days. You're expendable now. Companies have gone international. They'll just replace you with a cheap overseas worker. You'll do your job for a third of the pay, a quarter of the pay. For the bottom line, you mean nothing for a company in America. That's the brutal red pill on what the economy is going through right now, what it's like for the average man. And that's not even fair. Factoring in DEI, boys. So if you happen to be a male and white, good luck. Or Asian. They want more women. They want more women of color and a whole bunch of other little criteria and quotas that they got to hit. You're dead last. You could be the most qualified person busting your ass. That position will not go to you. Ridiculous, dude. Get the fuck out. You think that it's going to change our life or it's going to give us this emotion that we feel like we're missing. Yeah, because people are empty and they're chasing the high of trying to look cool on Instagram, the highlight reel. Every woman wants to be in front of a five-star restaurant, taking a picture of the seat of the Lamborghini, having a rich man bail them out of their problems. And that shit's not just going to happen to every woman. You're not all beautiful. You're not all meant to be wives. And the few of you that are, are going the wrong direction, going to get pooped on in Dubai because you're too short-sighted. Okay. And it's like an endless trail of spending and constantly going to make us feel empty because we're externalizing something that we need to give to ourselves. I think that's a big issue with consumerism and it's running rampant. Social media has changed the conversation so much because there's just been this abundance of the ability to see these glamorous, glorified lifestyles. It's not only celebrities that are presenting themselves this way, but even your own peers, which makes a lot of people feel like they're just not measuring up. Yeah, keeping up with the Joneses on crack. That's what social media is. You want to be depressed? Consume social media content. Go on Instagram all day, on TikTok all day. You'll be depressed in no time. I'm 37 and I've been working all my life to get 100K a year. And now that it's on my doorstep, it's not enough. Absolutely ridiculous. I think the retirement crisis will get even worse. A lot of people can't save because of low paying jobs, inflation, and insane rental rate. And now that home ownership is out of reach for middle class Americans, they won't have a house to retire with either. 100K is the new 60K. CEO wages have definitely kept up with the cost of living. Now imagine those of us living on less, way less. It's exhausting. I squirreled away cash for a rainy day, but with inflation pouring down, it feels more like a leaky bucket. Saving for retirement seems impossible if my money keeps losing losing value faster than I can earn it. I make 102000 That's 64K after taxes and insurance. Yet all government programs use your gross income for everything, even though they know this isn't what you make. It's insane. Put it this way. Back in 2000. Five forty-eight thousand dollars was was worth what seventy-five thousand is today. Jeez, man! Ordinary Americans are suffering, but mega corporations appear to be profiting more than ever. Something isn't right here. If you're not asking that question, you're the one that's getting played for a fool. Anyways, boys, it's a depressing situation. We talk about escaping it all the time in the private community. If you've joined, welcome to everybody new. Uh, we'll see you on the next one Monday. Hope everybody is having a decent weekend. Links in the description below if you want to be a part of our chats. Check out the second channel. I've got videos coming up there every single day. Some of them from chat, some new stuff you've never seen before. And let us know in the comments what you're doing to barely survive or if you managed to survive at all. See you on the next one.